Hey, it's Tara Green here. I'm talking about the Leo New Moon now. The Leo New Moon was new on July 28th at 1.56 p.m. is Eastern Daylight Time, but a new moon lasts for two and a half days until the first tiny little sliver of the moon appears. So the dark of the moon is the most mysterious, traditionally the most feminine in some ways. The women used to gather on the new moons and go to the red tents together or their yurts or their moon lodges and bleed together uh, their sacred moon blood. So let's see what's going on here. Now there's a lot going on in this Leo new moon. Now Leo, of course, the sign of kings and queens, the sign of drama, the sign of being center stage, the sign of pride and strength and the center of the heart, the will. So it's like third chakra energy. Everybody wants to be the king and queen of the day. Everybody needs to strut their stuff and wear their hearts on their sleeve and be strong. Everybody wants to be the source. So wear gold during a Leo new moon. Let's see what we got here. So of course, there's the sun and the moon at five degrees of Leo. So in that first decan of Leo, uh, closely conjunct to Ceres, uh, the former asteroid that's now a dwarf planet. So Ceres, the Earth goddess, is on fire. And you will see lightning strikes. I think I did just see a big lightning storm in Las Vegas. Um, earth changes, earthquakes, things like that, because the series herself is kind of pumping it up. Let's put it that way. Now you can see all the red lines here. Those are, are stress lines. Okay. Now, the big thing that's really happening at this new moon is what's been leading up to this major, major conjunction, which is the planet Uranus, the planet of shock and awe and change and revolution and new technology and freedom and chaos is exactly conjunct the North Node. That was exact um, a day or so ago. So you can see um, the North Node is moving down. So it's at 19 degrees on this chart, moving into an exact conjunction, actually a little bit after this new moon. And then the planet Mars very nearby at 15 degrees of Taurus. So they're within four degrees of each other. And then on August the 1st, they will all make an exact conjunction, Mars, Uranus, and the North Node. So that is a very rare conjunction. It hasn't happened in many, many years, even though Mars moves very quickly, but the conjunction in Taurus. So again, opposite the South Node in Scorpio always, which is the release point. The North Node is where the collective consciousness is going. So very much all about material things. The Earth herself, the Garden of Eden, our values, the tools, the resources, the food, the cows, you know, they've been destroying cows. They're destroying food supplies. Um, Farmers are being told to not grow food because of this lame excuse about greenhouse gases, but really it's just about shutting down food supplies in the world. So people are going to get mad, okay? Basically, people are going to be disruptive. Uh, it will be chaotic. It will be unexpected. Expect the unexpected. The internet can go down. The Uranus rules the internet. Uh, there was just a big uh, countrywide uh, outage of the internet for a day from Rogers, a big supplier in Canada here, knocking out the banks and bank machines and everything. So something like that. Now Mars itself in, in Taurus is very stubborn, very obstinate. Uh, it's explosive. Mars, Uranus energy is definitely volcanic explosions, attacks, um, any sharp object, guns. Uranus is uranium. Could be a nuclear strike. Could be a nuclear meltdown could be a, um, just like what happened in Fukushima. Uh, I hope not, all over again. Um, so there's some kind of faded, the North Node is fate. There's some kind of faded material, substantial, Taurus, the bull market, of course. Uranus also rules, rules cryptocurrency. So all of that shocking, major change, a breakaway, freedom, it's definitely very revolutionary and it always has to do with high tech and new inventions. So a new fiat, a new cryptocurrency could be uh, slated to come out. Uh, also, it's a big shock in the real estate markets, which I think are coming down because of um, the feds and in Canada just raising interest rates. And then Mars, Uranus and the North Node are squaring Mercury in Leo, which is in this chart based on Washington, D.C., right on the midheaven which is the world point, uh, the high noon position in the chart. So some big news from some higher up 
uh, you know, Leo is the big leader, the big kahuna. So it could be some shocking information about Joe Biden, uh, for example, and being the head leader, anybody high up there in the echelons of government, any world leaders. In fact, Leo represents all world leaders. Um, the South Node in Scorpio, again, releasing through secrets, through laundered money, through anything deceptive, secretive power, control, you know, all of that stuff, right? And then it's all squaring Saturn, which is retrograde in Aquarius. Again, Saturn is the planet that rules Aquarius. Uh, traditionally, Uranus rules Aquarius in modern technology. So definitely Saturn is connected there. So again, Saturn has limits. Um, it's the old boys club. We can see what they're doing. They're restricting freedom for women, for women's rights, for all kinds of things. It's a very warlike uh, energy, Mars, Uranus, and Saturn. You know, it seems like a very warlike signature. So there could be increased uh, an, an attack from outside, from foreign sources, and it could be the U.S. decides to attack. It could be in Russia, Ukraine, North Korea even has been threatening nuclear weapons. Uh, I wouldn't take that lightly even though they've done it before. So this is a pretty intense, intense time, okay? There's a lot at stake going on in the world right now. And you are gonna feel it personally, of course, if you also have planets at these degrees, okay? Now, oh, let's see, Pluto at 27 Capricorn. You know, the US is still in its ongoing, um, first Pluto return, Pluto in this chart is opposite Eros. 28 degrees of cancer so that erotic kind of energy something about could be some kind of again secretive sexual energy having to do with children again child pornography secrets being revealed um, the planet Venus is at 12 degrees of cancer which is connected to the US Sun so Venus women of course um, expressing their feelings expressing their emotions Venus and cancer rules the home the family again food Cancer rules comfort food and emotional safety and home safety and all of that. So Venus and Cancer conjunct Sirius, the brightest, most beautiful star in the sky. This has to do with the ancient Egyptian myth of Isis and Osiris and a kind of rebirth energy. Um, in that myth, Osiris is killed and Isis is bereft and she finds pieces of him and she finds his penis and she puts him back together from his penis like kind of clones him from his penis actually so it has to do with male sexual energy actually being put together by the feminine uh, sexual poli politics and things like that uh, Lilith is also conjunct Venus now they made an exact conjunction at 11 11 degrees a few days ago so the the dark woman uh, Lilith rules the new moon she's the goddess of abortion she's the first woman before Eve so again that Lilith whatever is dark shun negated about women's freedom to be sexual that's what's going to come out very much at this time with the Mars Uranus energy some really unexpected outlandish revolutionary freedom energy here from women from mothers um, standing up and really demanding their rights um, the asteroid Psyche there at 22 degrees of Virgo. The blue lines are where the uh, planets are in harmonious aspects. It's opposite Neptune and Pisces. Neptune is retrograde at 25 Pisces, retracing his steps, uh, conjunct to Juno, the feminine form of wisdom. So again, women's kind of psychic energy, um, Psyche opposite Neptune is very, very psychic. So it's Psyche's in Virgo, so it means you have to trust your gut instincts. It's not so woo-woo. It's like always remember to trust your body. Also, your body may be registering some very weird energies these days. I'm certainly feeling it. Uh, kind of a psychic temperature of what's going on in the world. Um, what else have we got here? Chiron, the wounded healer at 16 Aries, is also squaring Venus and Lilith. So again, there's that sense of woundedness and hurt, women being wounded and hurt. Um, Chiron is also trining Mercury. So this is the time when you would talk about your wounds, you would open your heart, you would be big and brave. You know, the biggest, bravest warriors can be vulnerable in cancer. Sorry, and Chiron is all about being vulnerable and going right into your wounds to heal them. So there's a lot of talk about, you know, mental illness and PTSD and narcissism. That's a, um, a Leo thing. So all of those things coming out into the open, being discussed more fully. Jupiter 
Jupiter, the big planet here, uh, is trining the sun and the moon. So this is a very lucky, very beneficial, good to take big risks, good to have faith and optimism that the sun's going to shine again. Remember, the sun rules Leo. So while the sun is in Leo, it is the most golden time of the year, and we have already entered what's called the Lion's Gate from uh, July 26th until the beginning of August. So this is, the, again, an ancient Egyptian um, date of the year. Okay, so we want to work with the energy of the lions and the courage and the passion and the daring and the lioness. You know, we would call him the goddess Durga, the Hindu goddess Durga. She's the only one who can defeat demons uh, when the world is threatening to be falling apart. So you would call upon Mother Durga and her chant is, Hey, Mata Durga. Basically, you just say, Hey, Mata Durga over and over and over, and that's how you call her. She's really beautiful, fierce goddess. Um, what else have we got her? Yeah, so Jupiter, eight degrees of Aries. Um, Jupiter's also set to turn retrograde. So Jupiter stationary in the skies right now. Jupiter uh, just after the new moon, um, 4.37 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, stationed retrograde. So when planets are stationary, moving retrograde or direct, they are at the most powerful. So mark that eight degrees Aries energy. Um, very important, again, trining the sun and the moon, okay? So you would want to think about when Jupiter is also going to go back over that degree again at the beginning of 2023. So it's a good time to start new beginnings, something that um, maybe you've put off. And again, retrograde periods are always good times to review, to go over things, to reflect. So really, we want to think about where we're headed to, where our values are with that North Node in Taurus, with Uranus and Mars. It's a time to totally get a makeover, uh, redo a website, um, redo everything in your life, basically. Break free of old patterns. You know, Saturn in Aquarius is squaring Mars, Uranus, and the North Node, but things are going to change. Things are going to change big time. I keep repeating this, but you got to remember, beginning of March, March the 7th, Saturn enters Pisces. So Saturn hasn't got that much longer to go in Aquarius. It's going to leave its own sign. Pluto's also going to enter Aquarius on 323, 2023, and that's going to be a huge game changer. So we want to think about, think ahead. You know, we're past already the, the uh, beginning of the year. We're actually on the first is Lamas, which is the traditional pagan day when we're marking a uh, halfway between summer and autumn, unfortunately already going too fast in the Northern Hemisphere here. Okay, so it's a major cross-quarter day. So again, that mars Uranus conjunction pretty shaking things up, all shook up. Uh, I just saw that Elvis movie, by the way. Um, and just before then, I'm going to talk about the weekend in a separate video, but I want to wish you all the best blessings. If you want to get in touch with me, I am at terratero.com.